Hey, how are you doing? My name's Elton, and I'm going to show you how to set up Docker on your Windows machine. If you're just getting started with Docker, this is for you, and will be all done in five minutes. I'll walk through the installation, show you how to run some simple Docker containers, and then you're all set to carry on learning on your own, or go along to one of your local meetups, which you should definitely do. The Docker community is friendly and welcoming. Here we go. Docker on Windows is a little bit different because Docker uses features of the Linux operating system, which Windows doesn't currently support. What we'll actually install is a virtual machine running Linux, and your Docker images will run on the VM, but you'll control them through Windows. It may sound complex, but it isn't, because the Docker guys have produced the Docker Toolbox, which takes care of all that for you. So here's my Windows machine. I'm running Windows 10, but Docker works on Windows 7 upwards. I'm going to browse to docker.com forward slash toolbox and start the Windows download. The Get Started link has a whole bunch of extra information, including how to check that your machine can run Docker, but most modern PCs and laptops will be fine. OK, I've got the Toolbox installer running, and I'll take the defaults to run a full installation, which gives me Docker, Docker Compose and Kitematic. The last two are useful tools that you'll want to look into, but here I'm just going to cover the basics. We'll just go with these additional tasks and let the installation run. It only takes a couple of minutes, but I'll fast forward. And when it finishes, I've got two shortcuts. And it's the Docker Quick Start Terminal that I'm going to use now. This is the command line interface. The first time it runs, you'll see a lot of text about VirtualBox, which is the software that runs the Linux VM on your Windows machine, and about virtual networks. But if it all goes well, then it shows you the Docker command line, with an ASCII art picture of a whale, which is nice, and an IP address, which is important. The Docker command line is a bit like the Windows command prompt, but it uses bash, which is the Linux command line. Some commands are the same, like cd to change directory, and some are different, like ls to list directory contents, and clear to clear the screen. But as you progress with Docker, you'll find bash is pretty easy to pick up. When you run Docker images, they'll be inside that Linux VM, so to access them, you'll need the VM's IP address, which is what we've got here. This is a private address in a virtual network on your PC, so no one else can access your VM or your Docker containers. If I start another command prompt and ping that IP address, I'm getting a response, so my Windows PC is able to talk to the Linux VM. To test the setup is all working correctly, we should run some containers, and I'll start with the classic Hello World. Docker run Hello World is your first step to becoming a master of containerization, and it's a simple command where Docker does a lot of work for you. Hello World is the name of an image on the public Docker Hub repository, and when you ask Docker to run it, it downloads the image to your local machine, creates a container based from that image, and then starts the container. All the Hello World image does is output some text and then end. But you take the exact same approach for much more complex containers, and there are thousands of images already on the hub. Running a website inside a container is a good way of testing that your whole setup is working correctly. So let's try this one. docker run -d -p sequence static site. That one takes a little longer to download, but when it's done, it will start a web server in a Docker container, which is listening for requests. The dash D flag tells Docker to run the container in the background, and dash uppercase P tells it to publish the network ports that the container exposes. We can run Docker PS to see which containers are running in the background, and this tells us we have a static site container running, and that port 80 inside the container is available as port 32773 outside the container, but this is a random port number, and it may well be different on your machine. So remember, our container is running inside a local VM, which has IP address 192.168.99.100. So I can browse to port 32773 on that address, and we see the page. Like it says, this is being hosted from the Nginx web server running inside a Docker container on your Windows machine. Very simple, but very powerful. It takes just a few minutes to install Docker on Windows using the Docker toolbox. 
That creates a Linux VM, and the Docker Quick Start Terminal is how you can work with Docker containers on that VM. When you've installed Docker, run Hello World, and started the static web server, then you know your machine is working correctly. Now, you can run any one of thousands of container images from the Docker Hub, including official images for popular software like MySQL, Nginx and Node, and of course, you can build your own images running your own software. That's it from me with this short tutorial. I hope you found it useful and that you go on to have some fun with Docker.